Hello, it's Maggie the Cheshire Crafter here. Now, I'm getting ready for Christmas and I'm in the middle of trying to make some Christmas presents. My neighbour, the lady that lives below me, is registered blind and she lives in a ground floor flat. Now, in the flat I'm in, above her, I'm actually quite warm and well insulated, but her flat is much colder than mine. So I'm making her a quilt for Christmas that, that uses velvets. And this is going to be my first improv quilt. I call it Make It Up As You Go Along. So why don't you come into the kitchen with me and see how I make it. I hope you like the tree. I have a selection of recycled, these are reclaimed from ladies' dresses, velvets. This is deep grape, deep burgundy, red and black and a bright red. And I wanted to be able to feel the textures of these. So I'm hoping that this will be a comfy and comforting warming quilt and I'm hoping that it'll come together quickly. In with, I'm just cutting pieces so that I've got a straight edge to sew and I'm cutting them with my rotary cutter. Now this will generate a great deal of lint, I'm aware of that, and it'll probably bung up that rotary cutter so I'm going to have to keep cleaning it. In this piece of fabric, I've got darts that I've unpicked and uh, it's very noticeable so I'm going to cut around those darts and make long pieces. This fabric I won't be able to iron so it's not a question of which way to press your seams or press your seams open. I'm just allowing them to fall in the direction that they want to. Let me just talk about the nature of velvet. Velvets have what they call a nap and a nap is the directional flow of the fabric that if you touch it in one direction that feels rough if you push it in that direction it feels smooth if you go on the smooth direction it will make the fabric appear darker if you rough it up it'll give you a slightly lighter color that's particularly noticeable on the bright red fabric here I'm using one that's got a print design in it. Look how gorgeous that catches the light. And then because I'm using ladies' dresses, this is a stretch fabric. It has a little bit of lycra or elastane within it. And that's proving a little bit difficult as I'm trying to get this uh, quilt to lie flat. That's one of the issues I've got with this fabric, with these fabric choices. Now, there are no rules in this but I will say I'm not going to try to put two pieces of fabric the same together unless I have to and and where possible I'm going to sew with a straight edge but I'm going to break my own, own rules because nobody's going to tell me off for doing so. The other thing that you'll notice here in the reclaimed fabric you'll see that I've got some unpicked hems. Sometimes that adds to the interest, sometimes it doesn't. I'm at my kitchen table and I'm going to sew it on my Singer heavy duty machine. Now because this is a man-made fabric I'm using a polyester Coates Moon polyester thread in black. And I've got the same thread in the top and in the bobbin. Now remember, because of the lint, I'm going to be cleaning that bobbin case out fairly frequently and I need a lint brush handy nearby. I've got my, my walking foot on and I've got my stitch length at three. Right, let's start sewing. I want this to be true patchwork but I am finding that there's quite a bit of stretch. Having a larger stitch length accommodates a little bit of stretch along that line. It's almost as if you're sewing on a bias and you'll notice that I've left about half an inch seam allowance here but it's really random. Right, my next piece just needs to go alongside, doesn't it? For my next piece, I just need to cut a straight edge. So I'm going to trim that excess off and just do a rotary cutter edge. 
and I'm just cutting and trimming off and keeping those scrappy bits because I might fill in a corner with those. But I'm going to cut that bit off so I've got a long straight line. I've added two pieces together here. The red fabric had been a dress and you can see the arms cut out here and the neckline. So I'm going to cut a straight line across the neckline and I'm going to get a piece that will go alongside that piece of fabric. First of all, a square edge to a square edge, right sides together and then sew. I'm trying not to overthink this. I've got two straight edges, but for this joined together piece, I'm just letting this seam fall the side that it feels most comfortable and it it's gone one direction. I'm gonna sew in that direction then. So actually the fabric is telling me what to do. Quite like that idea, don't you? Seam wants to fall in a certain direction. I'm going to make use of that because that will help with the non-iron technique. And I'm going to sew directly across that seam. Stitching a back stitch at the beginning and the end of each row of stitching. I've laid this out on the bed because I want to see how big it is. And I want to see that it's lying flat. Now, you will notice that some of the reds seem brighter one way. So that piece of red, which is the same fabric as that one. Oh, actually, it looks the same, I think, on camera. It does actually look slightly different. So that piece and that piece are from the same dress, but that piece looks brighter. And it's the, the pile is going in a different direction. Now, at times I've had to over sew like here to get it to sew flat, but it's not noticeable. So I'm going to do that again in a place where I found it quite awkward. And that's up here. Now, it's OK to use irregular shapes. This was a sleeve, but it means I'd need to put a triangle in here. And I think that might prove too difficult. So I think I'm going to cut that down and so a longer piece across there. What I'm looking at now is I've placed it on a backing and the backing is going to be this black fleece throw from Tesco that I bought last year. And I want to get it now so that I can fill in and make it rectangular. So down here at the bottom, I've got a, a curve upwards. I want to put a triangle in do it so first of all let me cut a triangle that's going to fit here throw i'm going to use to back this is from a selection at tesco i'm going to cut that label off but it's polyester and fully washable and the edges are already turned over and sewn and i'm going to make jolly good use of that first i'm going to cut that label and instructions off I'm laying the fleece out on the flattest surface I have, largest area which is on my bed. So I've just laid it out and pulled it so that it can be flat. And I'm going to just place the throw on the top of that. Made this throw so that the weight and the heaviest pieces of velvet are at the bottom because I want her to use it over her lap with this section at the top on her lap and this being the hem and this naturally takes the weight of the fabric down to that hem and then it'll fold comfortably around her lap now you'll see it's deliberately irregular and I want that I just need to sort out that top edge there as you can see, I haven't got the drape right. There are too many creases in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this bottom line first and then turn the quilt the upside down on the bed and then trying to get the drape right at the top here. And in order to sew it, I'm going to preserve these existing seams and I'm just going to do a top stitch over the edges here. This is not going to fray and... Uh, I don't want to turn it over, so it's going to be an irregular stitch around the edge. Right. I'm starting to stitch that bottom edge, and as you see, I'm sewing it from the top. I've kept the hemmed edge on the throw in place, and I'm just starting to place the fabric on the inside of that. I'm going to sew slightly to one side of the edge. I'm not doing a satin stitch. 
I'm literally just doing raw edge applique in effect here. And I'm going to sew right the way along that bottom edge. I'm using the extension table to help me keep this as flat as I can get it. I'm doing a back stitch at the beginning and the end. It's really difficult to do because both pieces are moving in a different direction. Um, as you can see, there are times when the nap of the fabric are taking me a little bit away from the edge. That doesn't matter. I can cut that seam edge closer to the seam line later. Proving quite hard to do and I'm beginning to question my choices of, of two fabrics. It doesn't behave like, it doesn't behave like cotton, that's for sure. I've been focusing my attention on what it looks like from the front, but from the back it looks like this. And it's actually looking okay. I think before I go any further and make any decisions, I'm going to see what that looks like on the bed. Right, so there's my hem stitch line. I'm going to cut beyond this off with a pair of scissors to create about the same distance of a hem as I have on the black and the red here. Stretch velvet won't fray, so it doesn't need hemming, which allows me to do an overstitch and leave a raw edge. As this washes, the raw edge will soften over time. What it doesn't need is wadding inside for quilting because the fabric itself is heavy enough. Across the top, the hemline isn't symmetrical or straight. And I want it that way. And I'm going to sew it in position just as it falls and I've pinned it. So I opted to sew the straight edges first and then come back to the irregular shapes, which are going to be my sleeve. And then I've got a little surprise here for you. The point here that I've had to unpick three times and it's because the pile of the fleece and the nap of the velvet are fighting against each other and pins wouldn't hold it in place so I've put in a basting stitch and I'll do the same when I come to overstitch with this irregular shape which is the uh, sleeve. technique certainly helped when I was working on an irregular shape, particularly when I was going around a curve. All I've now got to do is to remove that basting cotton. It was a real battle to sew this heart on because the fabric was fighting me all the way so it's a little bit ruched almost like a rosette but it gives it a little bit of texture um, and a little bit of added interest so I'm leaving it as it is the next bit is I just need to tidy up some of those edges trim those edges I'm using a rotary cutter and the one thing I want to make sure is I'm not cutting through the throw so I've turned it upside down and I'm just doing it by hand rather than using uh, a true straight edge from um, one of the, I can't think what these are called, from one of these. So here it is. It doesn't want to photograph well, but this quilt is truly improvised. It's used recycled fabrics and it's irregular. It drapes well. The most important thing is, I've broken all the rules. It's got a lovely feel to it and a lovely drape to it. And when you touch it, it's incredibly soft. It's incredibly warm. And uh, most of all, it's been made with love. For now, this is Maggie, the Cheshire Crafter. Come back and see me soon for more crafting and quilting, won't you? Bye.